Okay, up next is to visit Pinedale, Wyoming. So this is kind of like the gateway to the Wind Rivers. Behind me is the Wind River Mountains, so these next few segments will be in Pinedale. So the first thing to do in Pinedale here is the Sacred Rim Trail. This is a hike that's about four miles round trip, or out and back as they call it, meaning it's two miles one way, two miles back. One of the easier ways to get a look at the Wind Rivers. The Wind Rivers is a pretty famous mountain formation that's just east of the Tetons and is pretty famous for being a backcountry area. So you can hire guides, horseback trips, hiking guides to get back deep into the Wind Rivers and spend a few nights and get to some of the real famous formations. They're kind of like the Dolomites, the Italian Dolomites here in Wyoming. The guy down in Pinedale today told me that uh, some of these guides will actually drop your stuff off deep in the Wind Rivers where you're gonna be that night and they GPS locate it and you can get there. This trail um, is a fairly flat trail and a nice easy way to see the Wind Rivers. And then the, the ride up here from the town of Pinedale below is a real scenic ride past a couple of lakes and a real beautiful introduction to the Wind Rivers where we're going to be trying to explore over the next couple of days. So now we're going to go down into the city of Pinedale and do the Pitchfork Fondue. Next up is to do Pitchfork Fondue in Pinedale. This is such a fun cowboy cookout that luckily this is a just show up. Normally when you we do these western cookouts we have to get reservations in advance but this is fun. It's held right at the rodeo ground so you can see people riding their horses around and then you come in they have these western kettle chips that are delicious and tons of different sauces to try. Then they're gonna give you some brats and bread that are yummy. There's a salad bar with their signature berry vinaigrette which was really good and some fresh cut fruit. Then they come and they take your order and you can choose from chicken, steak, trout, or a hot dog. And our family, we tried all four because there's four of us and we wanted to try a little bit of all of them. They'll also serve you a baked potato that's yummy. God, I'm trying to think about what everyone's favorite was. I tried the trout and it was delicious and it was like a big piece of trout. And you know, in the West, eating trout, that's, that's how we get our seafood, <laughs> unless we ship it in. So if you want fresch seafood, you gotta eat trout in the West. Matt and our daughter were digging the chicken. Our daughter couldn't get enough of it. And, and our son was loving his steak. And um, my favorite dipping sauce was a sriracha. That was super good. Matt loved the honey Dijon barbecue. And what meat did you like the best? I have only tried the chicken actually. So. Oh. And then we're, we're still waiting for dessert, but it's starting to get a little dark. Yep. But we are going to either get to choose a brownie or a lemon bar. And I've heard the lemon bars are the best. So my hopes for those is that they're really good. Okay, so we've done some other cookouts in Wyoming. I mean, how, what are your thoughts? Okay, this one is delicious. And the pitchfork concept is so cool. They, they have your steak on the end of a pitchfork and they're dipping it in boiling water and cooking it. And it's really fun to kind of see their setup and their bread was super good and their chips were super good. I think that this might be the best quality food. It's super good. Best experience though, is the cookout at Roosevelt in Yellowstone. And that's because you get to go ride either a horse or take a check wagon out there. And then there is like singing and jokes and it's a whole experience and the food was delicious too. So yeah, we've done some great cookouts in the West. And I say, if you're coming on a trip to the West, you got to rustle up some grub at a cookout. Next up is to do the art walking tour of Pinedale. There's actually two little walking trails you can do. You can do the history or the art. And we started off wanting to do both of them, but we were overcome by the art. Overcome by art. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got one of these fun murals behind me and, and this little walking trail is great. There's 17 stops on it. We've hit most of them in about 40 minutes about and about like a mile of distance so not difficult and the town of Pinedale is just a really nice sized town I like that it's not a tourist trap but it's not a ghost town either there's a little bit going on here but not too much but the, the trail of art mostly has sculptures and murals and it's pretty enjoyable and one of the highlights of it was when we walked through Legion Park that is a really beautiful park that has a walkway, it has a river running through it, and some nice little art pieces. And the locals have told us that they find moose in their park sometimes. We didn't see a moose today, 
we're, we're still on the lookout for a moose. Okay, up next to do in Pinedale is to visit the Museum of the Mountain Man. I was kind of geeking out on this here just a little bit this morning as we've been visiting here for the last hour or so. I wanted to tell you just a few things to know. First of all, about the Mountain Man, then about the museum, and then uh, kind of give you my rating of this here. First of all, just the Mountain Men. The Mountain Man time period in American history it was about a 20 year time period for about 1820 to 1840, right around in there. The next thing to know about it is that they were here to trap beavers. They were actually company men. So a lot of, a lot of times you think of the mountain men as these individual guys that are just kind of going off into the mountains on their own, but they actually were all working for companies to come out here to trap beavers. Well, maybe not all of them, but most of them were working for companies. Come out here and trap beavers to make top hats. That was the style of the day is, is these top hats and the beavers, that's what they used them for the beaver pelts. They were kind of put out of business by uh, silk. China ended up making silk top hats and that kind of put the mountain men out of business. But right at the time they were kind of going out of business, that was around 1840s when people started immigrating out to the western states, out through the Rockies and stuff. So these mountain men became important guides because they had already explored around so much of the Rockies that they kind of knew the best paths to get through the Rockies. They actually played quite an important role in the story of America. They often, because they were out here on their own, they often intermingled with the Indians. Of course, they traded commonly. They intermarried with a lot of the Native Americans. In fact, um, this area here was a big mountain man rendezvous site. The whole the, the mountain man rendezvous were a collection of Native Americans and mountain men coming together to trade goods. And it, one, one thing I learned in there, there were 16 different rendezvous that they have on record all throughout let's see utah idaho and wyoming and six of them were here in this pinedale area in fact i'm going to drive over to see the mountain man rendezvous site the actual place that they held their rendezvous here in just a moment okay so thanks for indulging me on a little bit of the little little trail down history here the museum is kind of a small museum this building behind me here is basically what you see but wow they had a lot of incredible things in there i thought just artwork. They had a teepee that was made by this Native American named Bad Hand, who is just an amazing speaker. He comes here every year and gives a talk, and he actually made this teepee out of buffalo hide, just like the old Plains Indians used to. Uh, that reminds me, by the way, they do hold a yearly rendezvous kind of recreation or celebration here in July every year in Pinedale. So if you're coming to Pinedale, Think about planning your trip around there if possible. But anyway, the, the teepee was amazing, the artwork, the sculptures, they had a ton of just, they had a ton of guns, they had a ton of animals in there. I mean, gosh, I don't know. Was there anything stand out to you in there, Cheryl? So what I love was they had some great stories of the wild plaques that really made the history come alive. Actual stories of them getting chased by bears or times where Native Americans saved them, or times where Native Americans attacked them. I thought that their program for children was great. They, instead of like the Junior Ranger book, they had a bingo card and our kids loved it. They were really engaged and they gave them some cool little prizes when they were done. They got a little bit of a raccoon pelt and a, a little wooden coin to remember the Mountain Man Museum. For being a real small museum here, this is really nice, really well done in there. I mean, I'm giving this like a nine. Like a, if you're in Pinedale for certain, you gotta come over here. It doesn't take all that long. It's not all that expensive either. Really well done, pretty cool thing. Okay, so definitely recommend coming to the Museum of the Mountain Men. Okay, the next thing to do in Pinedale is to eat here at the Wrangler Cafe. This is the place we heard was where you need to go for breakfast. This is where the locals go. The guy at the hotel said, if you eat breakfast here, you're not gonna need to eat lunch today. So it, they, they did have big portions. Cheryl got some pancakes, a pancake stack, and they were huge, three of them on her plate, filled up the whole plate. Got some French toast and that bacon. So standard breakfast fare. They did have some skillets and some burritos and some things, you know, some other things, but uh, we just kind of got the standard stuff. But anyway, if you're in Pinedale, here's a good little place for you to eat breakfast. Okay, so the next thing is to visit the actual site of the Mountain Man Rendezvous. I mentioned that there were six that were held in this little valley in Pinedale. Later on this trip, we're going to go to Lander and Riverton, which is on the other side of the Wind River Mountains, and they also held some rendezvous there. This was this was the big one here, which is really cool because it looks a lot like that painting we saw at the uh, Mountain Man Museum. So it's 
really cool just to sit here and think about how these guys would have gathered here, these Native Americans, these mountain men, would have gathered here and held just a week-long party and traded goods and drank and all that stuff. I forgot to tell one story at the last stop, which is that I mentioned that these mountain men, most of them worked for these companies that sent people out here to get these, these beaver pelts. One of these companies was called the Hudson Bay Company, an early fur trading company that uh, operated in Canada and, and in the United States. Well, what, what, what is now Canada and the United States. That company, the Hudson Bay Company, is still in business today. They do retail and all that. So it's just crazy to think about some of these old companies back from the 16, 1700s that still exist today in a completely different type of business.